Hi there, I'm Matthew Lester from the Rhodes Business School. This is a lecture about entrepreneurship and South African Revenue Services. They are the elephant in the room of small business, they are stakeholders in your business, and we have to observe some basic principles with regard to SARS. They don't own your business, far from it, but it does work on a basis of comply and pay. If you don't do that, you're going to face the consequences of the Tax Administration Act. That's the bad news if you want. The good news about it is that SARS is very sympathetic to entrepreneurs and there are some super tax regulations that you can help to minimize your business tax as an entrepreneur. Now, it's all about how you go about the whole system. And I'm going to take you through that over the next half an hour or so to show you that one of the best things about being an entrepreneur is it's got the best tax package in South Africa. When in doubt, become an entrepreneur from a tax perspective. The worst thing that you can do from a tax perspective is have a job. So, when we worked on the Davis Tax Committee, we said the following things about entrepreneurs in South Africa. There's the formal sector up the top. Those are the big companies. The entrepreneurs are the missing middle. That's what we're trying to grow in terms of the National Development Plan. They need a special tax incentive. That must be distinguished from the informal sector. That's about a billion or so very, very small businesses. They don't employ anybody. They don't have huge growth potential. They are making their contribution to South Africa by keeping themselves alive. We've got to have a look at the different tax packages that work between the informal sector, the entrepreneurs, and the formal sector. They have a sliding order, and they all play different ways in tax. So we go like this. About 500 companies in South Africa pay the vast majority of South Africa's income tax. There are about a million companies registered, but there are only 500 or so really nice big ones. The same really applies when it comes to personal tax. When you look at taxpayers earning over 500,000 rand per annum, there are only about 500,000 or so of them, and they pay about 63% of South Africa's personal tax. So what the tax system is doing is it is seeking to recover as much as it can from the bigger guy, and probably a lot less from the entrepreneurs. But you have to go about it in the right way. So what we're saying is the actual amount of tax paid by entrepreneurs in South Africa is very small, and entrepreneurs don't realize this, and this is one of the problems. They hide away from SARS, and they don't know what to do. They cause themselves an enormous amount of stress, when in fact, by just following the system, they'd pay a minimal amount of tax. So, we have to realize that in terms of Section 22 of the Tax Administration Act, Anybody who comes into receipt of any income must apply for a tax number within 21 days by filling in the forms and sending them off to SARS with the appropriate documentation. SARS will then come back to you. They can refuse to give you a tax number. That doesn't often happen. And they might want a whole lot of information. It can even go as far as asking for biometric information. The important thing from that slide is it's your job as the taxpayer to make first contact with SARS, not for SARS to find you. But then we go into the wonderful world of the different types of trading entities. Now we've been going to be doing another whole module on this as to which is the best trading entity to have. But basically we have those who trade in their own name, they're called sole proprietors. Those who do trade with somebody else, that's called a partnership. There's some clever dicks who want to trade through a trust. And then there are those who trade through companies. Very importantly, when one comes to entrepreneurship, there are two variations to this theme. There are things called small business corporations that we need to have a look at. And then comes the whole idea of paying tax based on your turnover, not on your profit. That is the special package for the survivalist business. So let's start off by saying we'll come back to the formal sector and the entrepreneurs later. We need to first kick off and say, informal sector, that's the survivalist business entrepreneur. What's the tax package for them? 
And there is a separate and very generous tax package for entrepreneurs below turnover of a million rand per year. That's found in the sixth schedule to the Income Tax Act, which says, hey, we'll be nice to you. If your turnover in a micro business is less than 335,000 rand a year, we're going to walk straight past you. Just tell us about it, carry on. No tax liability at all. And then we'll allow you to pay a minimal amount of tax going all the way up to a million rands turnover per annum. After a million rand, well then you are an entrepreneur. We'll do a different deal for you after that and the sixth schedule closes out to you. So a micro business is a business that has a turnover of less than a million rand. There are certain types of businesses that don't qualify. For example, investment companies that hold shares or where than 20 more or professional persons who have a rendering professional services, they can't qualify for this concession. There are also other little ones such as personal service providers, those are recruitment officers and the likes, or where one gets massive capital gains, again you can be thrown out of the turnover system. And then finally, everybody has to have a February year end to qualify for the turnover tax principle. The bottom line is you're going to qualify for this providing that your turnover doesn't exceed a million rand per year. If you're in a partnership you can do it as well provided that each partner's income doesn't exceed a million rand a year. So, lesson two. If your income is less than 335,000 rand a year you've actually got nothing to worry about in tax. You're not going to pay any. But strictly speaking, you are required to register for tax. You register for tax from RAND 1. You can't sit, as some people say, below the radar screen and not let SARS know what you are doing. So now what do you do about it? Well, you know, we don't like talking to SARS any more than we like talking to dentists. So what are your alternatives? You can go to a tax consultant, and there are quite a lot of them around, but then you've got to pay for it. You can try and do it yourself. That has two problems. One is you don't know very much about tax. And two is you're going to spend more time on it than you should. And you should be tending to your business. There's another line which is to say, I'll just forget about it, which a lot of people do. That's illegal. Well, the best and cheapest option is to simply go down to the SARS office twice a year and fill in a form and they can show you what to do. And SARS can't charge for that. Again, people have a bit of a hesitation about doing it. There are others who say that's the easy way out. Remember this crucially about a business. For a business to grow, it's going to have to register for tax. And the longer you leave this, the worse it gets, because then we start talking about arrear taxes. So we have to say, for a business to grow, it has to be registered as a, as a taxpayer. It's going to need bank accounts. It's going to need tax clearance certificates to provide for its customers. It's going to have to register for FICA, RICA, and all that stuff as well. So you're just not going to grow into a bigger business if you stay unregistered. That's the sad part about the story. People hiding away from SARS are actually doing themselves no favors. So we've got the various types of trading entities that we looked at now. It doesn't matter if you are an individual or a partnership or a company, you can get into the turnover tax system if your income is below 335,000 rand per annum. So now we ask the question, well, okay, I've grown up a little bit. My income's over 335,000 rand per annum, but it's less than a million rand per annum. Do I still stay with the turnover tax system? Well, the question is, how much tax would a micro-business pay on turnover of 999,999 rand per annum? And the answer is 14,150 rand, or 1,4% tax rate. That's unbeatable. That's incredibly generous. So the turnover tax system in most situations is the way to go. And above that, there's a wonderful aspect to this. You only have to record your turnover. You don't have to keep comprehensive books and sets of records and get accountants in and everything else. You tot up your turnover twice a year and you put it on a return. However, if your profit is below 75,000 rand per annum, 
you might be better off on the individual tax system. Why? Every South African is entitled to earn 75,000 Rand per year without paying tax. So you may score better in a very low margin business or in a loss making business if you move to the personal tax system. But there won't be many of them that get that right. So we go to the tribes of trading entities again and we say, right, if you go over 335,000, you you've got all the options open to you, individual or company, and we're going to put a few variations to that scheme. But let's tell you a little bit about individuals tax in South Africa. South Africa, by international standards, has a very low individuals tax rate, up to about 500,000 rand a year. Above that, we start to pay a tremendous amount more tax. So there used to be this old thing about when in doubt form a company. Well, that's not necessarily the best way to go because individuals pay less tax than companies at the lower tax rate. So what we've got to say is also some of your tax is absorbed by the tax rebates. So lesson three, what do we do if turnover exceeds 335,000? We are saying if you're profitable, stay with turnover tax. However, if you're below 75,000 Rand income, that's net of expenses, well, we might go to the, tax, to the personal tax system. But remember that we've got to have a look and say, if we're looking at all of this under turnover tax, you only have to keep records of your turnover. If you want to in small business go to the income tax system, then you are going to have to have a full set of books and records and we're going to have to complete tax returns that might be quite expensive. So my general recommendation here is to say to people, look, if you can use the turnover tax system, use it. It's far cheaper in the administrative cost. So now what happens when we go over a million rands turnover per annum? Does all the generosity stop? No, far from it. That's when the turnover tax system falls away, yes. And you're going to have to keep proper books and records, yes. There's no exception to that rule. But that's, there's still a package to help the entrepreneur. Now remember, we're going over a million rand now. We are going to have to keep proper books and records because we can't pay tax based on your sales or turnover. What we've got to do now is turn towards your calculating your taxable income. So, what else happens when your turnover exceeds a million rand per year? Well, they're saying you're out of the world of micro business. Now it is a mandatory requirement that you must register for VAT. And we'll do a separate module on VAT to show you the basics of that as well. So now we move on and we say, we've got the formal sector up the top, we'll leave them alone. We now need to look at what is the deal for entrepreneurs in the middle, because we've dealt with the informal sector. And we say, there are the different trading entities. What can we tell you about them? Well, we can say the turnover tax system has fallen away. Perhaps we should be looking at this thing, what's a small business corporation? Now, we've already seen under personal income tax that there are low rates of tax below 500,000 Rand per annum. We now move over to corporates and we find, look, corporates have got a 28% flat rate of tax. So if one goes back to the personal rates of tax, you can see that that is way above the tax rates of at least up to 393,000 Rand a year. So we don't want to go to a corporate until we have to. However, there is a special deal for entrepreneurs, and that's called a small business corporation. This is a company that doesn't have the flat rate of tax of 28%. Rather, it is given a sliding scale of tax. So it pays no tax up to 70,000, and then a sliding scale so that the 28% is only achieved at 550,000 Rand per annum. Now, there have obviously got to be hurdles you've got to get through to get to what is a small business corporation. First of all, it has to be a close corporation or private company. So if you were forming a new entity today, that would be a private company. We can't form close corporations anymore. Then, importantly, 
the entire shareholding must be held by natural persons throughout the year of assessment. So you can't have a corporate shareholder in your business. And then it continues. None of the shareholders of your company can have any financial interest in any other private company during the year of assessment. They can have listed shares, they can have their unit trusts, but we can't have multiple ownerships of SVCs. That catches a lot of people out. Then, not more than 20% 20 of the income of the close corporation can consist of investment income or personal service income. So I, as a tax advisor, can't go out there and market my wares through a services a small business corporation and I can't put all my investments into a small business corporation. And the company can't be a personal services provider, that is a company who rents out the services of another person for an award. There's some other incentives in all of this. If you have a small business corporation and you buy manufacturing assets, you can write them off in total in the year that they are acquired so as to reduce your taxation. And there's even a specialist rate given on second-hand assets and other assets which are written off 50% in the first year, 30% in the second year, and 20% in the third year. So everybody comes along and says, ah, that's nothing. My friends tell me that you must form a trust, you know, because you're not socially acceptable or something because you don't have a trust. Now, the taxation of trusts has failed more tax students than practically anything else in the Income Tax Act. It's usually complicated because the tax provisions depend on who set up the trust or who was the donor. Then there's the trust itself. Then there are loans to form a trust and committees of trustees and beneficiaries. And the Tax Act is extremely complicated in attributing the income to either the donor or to the beneficiary or to the settler. And that is a very complicated aspect of trusts where you just don't want to go. Leave them out of it. We must also look at the different top rates. So the top rate of tax for an individual is 41%, but they only get there when their income is over 700,000 rand a year. A trust, if the income is trust taxed in the trust, is taxed at 41% from the first rand. And a company is taxed at 28% from the first rand. And then when one goes into the capital taxes, that's something you might look at later in your life when you've made a lot of money, you see that personal income tax rates on capital gains are the lowest, they're the highest on a trust, and then a company also has to pay higher capital taxes than does an individual. So what we say with this is, you might, if you are a small business, be an individual or in partnership. That can help you if your income is low. Or you can form a company and that can be registered as a small business corporation. Now this gets, it's starting to get a bit confusing. So let's try and demonstrate it with reference to an example. So here we have Michelle. She has a turnover of 1.2 million rand per annum. So she's required to be registered for both income tax and VAT. Of that 1.2 million, she gives 500,000 rand per annum as taxable income. That's a profit. She doesn't employ anybody. And she says, I don't have to be tax registered for tax at all. I'm just below the radar screen. Leave me alone. So what we've got to say is, what advice can we give her? Is she required to be registered? What form should she trade in? And, you know, we should she be using a small business corporation? Now, watch the figures. They're quite stunning. So we say you can be an individual sole proprietor or you can be a company or you can be a small business corporation. You can't pay tax on the turnover tax basis. That's been excluded. So you're required to register for both VAT and income tax. Turnover tax not available. So now, let's have a look at the personal tax tables and say, would that help you? So we do a personal tax computation. We take all of these things into a calculator. We say her taxable income is 500,000. 
The tax measured per the tax tables on that would be 129,000. Then there's a rebate, and that results in an average tax rate of 23% on 500,000 Rand. Now, that's the sort of level of tax that you would pay if you were receiving a salary. But because Michelle is receiving here a taxable income from a business, there's a slightly different way of handling it. We can say, go and incorporate your business, form a company. And a lot of people work on that basis. They say, when in doubt, form a company. Forget it. Look at that. On 500,000 rands worth of income, the tax rate at flat 28% results in a higher tax liability than if you, type, if you put it in your own name. So she would have been better off to ta tax herself as a sole proprietor. But that's not the end of it. We say, why don't you get clever and arrange your affairs so that your company is recognized as a small business corporation. Then you get the sliding scale of tax, and that makes a huge difference. Because if you go by the SBC tax table, you'll only pay 48,950 rands tax on 500,000. The average tax rate on that is 9,79% on 500,000 versus the personal tax rate of 23% or the corporate tax rate of 28%. Do you see how it's benefiting you? Now, if you want to get even cleverer, we say, hang on, there's a final variation to this whole thing. There are two taxpayers if we form a small business corporation. And Michelle also has her own sliding tax tail. So what we do with it is we split the income. We say, we have a company registered as a small business corporation, but it's entitled to pay a salary to Michelle. So we pay her a salary of 75,000 Rand a year out of the company, reducing the company profit from 500,000 to 425,000. Michelle picks up 75,000 Rand's worth of income, but she hasn't reached tax threshold yet, so she pays no tax on it. So the SBC would only be taxed on 425,000 Rand, its tax liability would reduce to 33,200 Rand, average tax rate 7,81%. So what does this tell you? It says there is a package there for entrepreneurs. It can reduce their tax by a long way, but you've got to get it right. And I suggest to most people who are entrepreneurs, if you can get the SBC concession, take it and run. That's fantastic. So always go that route. But if you are the smaller taxpayer, with only a little bit of turnover, the cost of running your SBC and bookkeepers and tax returns and all of that amazing stuff, it's better off to just pay turnover tax and be done with it and keep your hands off owning your own company. I'm Matthew Lester at the Rhodes Business School. Thank you for your attention.